In one of our earlier videos, we discussed the BEAM rule and explained that NFPA 13 categorizes obstruction requirements based on the vertical distance from the sprinkler deflector, specifically 18 inches. In that video, we applied the BEAM rule to situations where the only available path for water was beneath the obstruction. Now, we're shifting focus to cases where any part of the obstruction is located within 18 inches vertically from the deflector and water can pass on both sides of it. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the three times rule as it applies to standard spray sprinklers. We'll also briefly touch on the four times rule, which is relevant for extended coverage and residential sprinklers. For obstructions that allow water to pass on both sides, the sprinkler must be installed at a minimum distance equal to three times the largest dimension of the obstruction. This ensures that the spray pattern remains effective and isn't compromised by the presence of the obstruction. For example, consider an open web joist with openings that make up at least 70% of the cross-sectional area, allowing water to pass on both sides of the bottom flange. If the joist's width is 5 inches and the depth of the flange is 1 inch, the largest dimension is 5 inches. Applying the 3 times rule, the sprinkler shall be installed at a minimum distance of 15 inches from the bottom flange. The first exception to the 3 times rule for horizontal obstructions involves positioning the sprinkler more than 24 inches away from the obstruction. According to NFPA 13, this spacing is considered the maximum clear distance. Let's look at an example to see how this exception helps. Assume a cable tray 12 inches wide is installed below the ceiling. Applying the 3 times rule, requires the sprinkler to be placed at least 36 inches away from the tray. However, using the maximum clear distance instead, placing the sprinkler more than 24 inches away, offers greater flexibility in its location. We can view the maximum clear distance from a different angle and state that the three times rule shall be applied to obstructions located within 24 inches of the sprinkler. When the distance between the sprinkler and the obstruction exceeds 24 inches, the three times rule can be disregarded. Before we wrap up this topic, let's highlight one important point. In our example, if the construction is considered unobstructed, standard spray sprinklers can be placed between 1 and 12 inches below the ceiling. This area is shown in blue. Now imagine a cable tray installed 21 inches below the ceiling. Using the maximum clear distance rule, 24 inches, the allowable area for sprinkler placement becomes more limited. You might wonder, is the blue area the only acceptable zone for placing the sprinkler? The answer is no. Remember, the three times rule only applies when the obstruction is within 18 inches vertically of the sprinkler deflector. So, if the sprinkler is positioned more than 18 inches above the cable tray, the rule no longer applies, and the installation still complies with NFPA 13. This example illustrates that placing sprinklers closer to the ceiling can often mitigate the impact of nearby obstructions. Finally, it's important to note that the maximum clear distance for vertical obstructions, such as columns, is no longer applicable starting from the 2016 edition of NFPA 13. If the obstruction is no more than 4 feet wide, NFPA 13 allows the 3 times rule to be disregarded, provided an additional sprinkler is installed on the opposite side and its distance to the center line of the obstruction does not exceed half the allowable spacing between sprinklers. When it comes to vertical obstructions, the meaning of opposite side can be a bit unclear. For example, if a sprinkler is installed 6 inches away from a 2 feet by 2 feet column, which of the surrounding sprinklers, numbered 1 through 9, should be considered the one on the opposite side? To answer this question, it's important to remember that one of the key objectives behind NFPA 13's obstruction rules 
is to minimize the shadow area created by nearby obstructions, which can interfere with sprinkler discharge. Therefore, when NFPA 13 refers to installing a sprinkler on the opposite side of the obstruction, it means that the additional sprinkler should help minimize the shadow area caused by the obstruction. This leads to another question. What does minimize actually mean, since it's a qualitative term? To evaluate it quantitatively, the recommended approach is to apply the Isman method, which helps calculate the acceptable shadow area. By applying this method, we can determine the acceptable shadow area for both standard spray and extended coverage sprinklers, as shown in this table. Let's return to our example and assume the occupancy is classified as light hazard. Under NFPA 13, this means the maximum coverage area per sprinkler is 225 square feet. When we calculate the shadow area caused by the column obstruction, we find it to be 79.8 square feet, which significantly exceeds the acceptable limit. To evaluate which of the sprinklers, numbered 1 through 9, can be considered as being on the opposite side that minimizes the shadow area, we begin our assessment with sprinkler 1. When we draw the coverage area of sprinkler number 1, we can see that although it covers part of the shadow area created by the first sprinkler, the remaining shadow still exceeds the acceptable limit. Therefore, sprinkler 1 cannot be considered the opposite side sprinkler, as it does not sufficiently minimize the shadow area caused by the obstruction. Next, we apply the same procedure to sprinkler 2. This sprinkler covers a larger portion of the shadow area compared to sprinkler 1. However, the remaining shadow still exceeds the acceptable limit, so sprinkler 2 also cannot be considered the opposite side sprinkler. Sprinkler 3 covers more of the shadow area than sprinkler 2, but the remaining shadow still exceeds the acceptable limit. With sprinkler 4, the remaining shadow area drops to just 7.5 square feet, which is below the threshold, so sprinkler 4 can be considered the opposite side sprinkler for the first sprinkler. Interestingly, sprinkler 5 provides the most shadow coverage and may represent the optimal choice in this scenario. Since sprinklers 1 through 9 are arranged symmetrically, we can conclude that sprinkler 6 offers an acceptable location similar to sprinkler 4. On the other hand, sprinklers 7, 8, and 9 do not effectively minimize the shadow area, making them unsuitable as opposite side sprinklers. In the 1999 edition of NFPA 13, an exception was introduced for standard spray sprinklers in light hazard and ordinary hazard occupancies, exempting certain non-structural elements such as signs, lighting fixtures, cable trays, pipes, and ducts. This exception applies only to standard spray sprinklers, not extended coverage or other types. The NFPA 13 committee made this decision because non-structural elements are often not finalized during the initial layout and are typically added after sprinkler installation. Additionally, fire incident data showed they rarely contribute to large loss fires. It's important to note that this allowance doesn't mean non-structural elements can be completely ignored. As explained in Annex A of NFPA 13, these elements should not conceal, obscure, or obstruct the sprinkler discharge. The interpretation of whether non-structural elements conceal, obscure, or obstruct sprinkler discharge lies within the discretion of the authority having jurisdiction. In such cases, the AHJ may evaluate both the specific project features and the sprinkler's discharge pattern. While the discharge pattern depends on available pressure, it can be approximated by applying the beam rule table along with the corresponding A and B values, allowing us to visualize the expected spray coverage. As shown in this figure, the sprinkler is installed just above a three-foot wide duct. When we visualize the discharge pattern, it's clear that the duct interferes with its proper formation. By installing the sprinkler closer to the ceiling, the impact of the obstruction on the spray pattern can be reduced. 
However, the minimum acceptable distance is ultimately determined by the authority having jurisdiction. The only scenario where we can be certain the duct is not considered an obstruction is when the distance from the deflector to the top surface of the duct exceeds 18 inches. In that case, the three times rule can be disregarded. The three times rule does not apply to sprinkler piping under three inches in diameter. These smaller pipes, often used for branch lines, are narrow enough that they don't significantly obstruct the sprinkler spray pattern, so designers can exclude them from obstruction spacing requirements. For pipes three inches or larger, the rule does apply. These can block water discharge if too close to the deflector. To maintain proper clearance, three times the pipe's diameter, sprinklers must be installed on a sprig or arm over, ensuring unobstructed coverage during a fire. For extended coverage and residential sprinklers, when obstructions are located within 18 inches vertically from the sprinkler deflector and water can pass on both sides, the four times rule shall be applied. In this case, the greater dimension of the obstruction is used to calculate the required clearance. For horizontal obstructions, the maximum clear distance is 36 inches. However, for vertical obstructions, there is no specified maximum distance. There are a few exceptions, as with standard spray sprinklers. Sprinklers may be installed on the opposite side of the obstruction, and pipes less than 3 inches in diameter are also exempt from this rule. It's important to note that the exception for non-structural members in light and ordinary hazard areas does not apply. That's why in spaces like mechanical rooms, where numerous pipes and ducts may be present, designers often choose standard spray sprinklers. In this section, we'll place extended coverage sprinklers in a parking area measuring 80 by 60 feet. The space includes 12 columns, each measuring 2 by 2 feet, and one cable tray with a width of 6 inches, located 22 inches below the ceiling. Both the columns and the cable tray have already been defined in NSVCAD software, allowing us to focus on sprinkler layout and obstruction analysis. After launching the app, we begin by entering key information, including the addition of the standard, the sprinkler type, and the coverage area. For this example, we'll assume the distance between the deflector and the ceiling is 6 inches. Based on the selected sprinkler type, extended coverage, the software automatically applies the 4 times rule. When we move the sprinkler closer to a column, it calculates the minimum permitted distance. If the sprinkler is placed too close, the software highlights a shadow area behind the column, indicating potential obstruction. For the cable tray, the minimum permitted straight line distance is 24 inches. In the plan view, we see that the horizontal distance comes out to 17.88 inches. This value is automatically calculated by the software, based on the vertical distance between the deflector and the cable tray, using the Pythagorean formula. I hope you find this video helpful. You can download the software from nsvsoft.net 